If you want to continue to perform at a high level without disrupting your training, here are six ways that you can do that. The first is by focusing on the 80-20 rule. Now, if you're not familiar with this, you can get 80% of the result by focusing on just the 20% that is the most important. So if you think about a race or an event, let's say the 50 freestyle, most of the race is the start, the turn, and the finish. Yes, the swimming is important, but if you focus on these specific areas, you can actually drop time without any kind of tapering. For example, you can focus on developing your streamline. Focus on your streamline, you're going to swim faster. You can really zone in on your starts. Literally do more starts, focus on developing that specific skill, and you can improve 80% of the race by just combining a few of these things together or just focusing on one of them. You can also think about your breathing pattern or race strategy. Let's say you're focusing on the 50 freestyle, you wanna drop time, you always do it in three breaths, now it's time to step it up and focus on how you can do it in two breaths. And you can do that not only by focusing on your training, you don't have to taper, but actually just do it in the event by focusing on that specific thing. Whether it's your pullouts or your tempo, the overall race strategy, by focusing on the right things, that is how you can drop time and swim faster without any kind of taper. Now another thing that you can do, which I love, is visualization. I remember when I was in high school, our coach would have us sit down, close our eyes, and visualize visualize the race. He would actually talk through from the moment that you enter the pool, you smell the aroma, use all of your senses, you visualize the pool that you're going to compete at and actually walk through the steps of the starter blowing the whistle, stepping onto the blocks, you hear the beep, how you dive in the water, the way your fingertips feel when you first cut through the water, go through the entire race lap by lap and really visualize that. Then when you finish to the wall, you see the scoreboard and it's your goal time. By doing this process over and over, you can actually visualize success. And let me tell you, it is so powerful because swimming is both physical and mental. So you wanna visualize your race and your time, use all of your senses, and you can do all of that when you're not tapering. Now another thing that you can do is you can shave or suit up. Now if you really wanna swim fast, there's only two ways to do it. You can reduce drag or you can increase propulsion. And when it comes to reducing drag, there's a couple of ways that you can do that immediately. Most swimmers shave down only a few times a year for big races, but if you wanna drop time right away, you can just shave down. And after more than a decade of elite competitive swimming and shaving down dozens of times. I'm really picky about the razors that touch my body, and I want to thank today's video sponsor, Henson Shaving. Henson razors are produced in line with aerospace engineering standards, and as you can tell, I'm a big fan of science, and these razors are scientifically engineered to give you the closest shave ever. The single blade reduces ingrown hairs and the Henson razors are specifically designed to hold the blade firmly in place at the optimal shaving angle, which gives you a smooth and perfect shave every time. Now, as a swimmer and someone who shaves down a few times a year for competition, I can tell you just how important having a close shave is to swimming fast. Now, I've used the AL13 razor for my last couple of shaves and I can definitely feel the difference. So head over to HensonShaving.com forward slash MySwimPro. You'll get 100 blades for free with your purchase and using the code MySwimPro. Once you own a razor, it's only going to cost you three to five dollars per year to shave. Now, if you don't want to shave down for a race, you can simply suit up. And when I'm talking about suit up, we're talking technical racing suits. These offer compression. They're gonna be more quick than your natural skin or your hair, so you will swim faster. Now, in recent years, a lot of the professional swimmers and top-level collegiate athletes are doing this on a regular basis, wearing technical racing suits almost every single week. Now, you don't have to wear this every single day, but if there's a specific event that you wanna perform at, I don't believe there's anything wrong with suiting up, especially if you have multiple suits from prior competitions. They're a little bit used. They're not gonna be as compressive, but they're still gonna give you that feeling of speed, which is gonna give you that much more confidence when you go through the race. Next up, you have to teach yourself how to swim faster. And the only way you can do that is by actually swimming faster. So if you wanna go faster in practice or in a race, you literally have to train your body how to do it. And that means actually sprinting in your workouts. If you follow the My Swim Pro app workouts, we give you the exact 
effort level to perform on every set. And if you're swimming on a team, the coach is probably gonna tell you when it's time to swim fast. But if you don't feel like you're getting enough speed, there's nothing wrong with throwing in a few extra sprints at the end of the workout. Because what you're looking for is muscle activation. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but really you have to train your mind and your body what it's like to swim faster. And if you do this regularly enough, even if you're broken down, you're in the middle of the season, you can actually swim faster without the taper. Now, a few other things. You can work harder. I don't wanna be that guy, but I'll be that guy. You need to push yourself. You have to train hard. If you wanna swim fast, you have to put in the work. So don't be lazy, get off the couch, maybe not right now, but get out there and make it happen. You gotta train hard, you gotta swim fast, and you gotta put it all together when it counts. You're teaching your body how to swim faster. And a few ways that you can do that, not only using equipment like a bungee, but also increasing your resistance. If you're trying to increase resistance, what we're really doing is increasing muscle activation. Because when you swim, it's kind of like when you lift weights, you're not really fully utilizing your actual strength. So you wanna tap into the, to the muscle potential that you already have, but you're just not using it. And you can do that by swimming with resistance, like parachutes you can throw on if you have a power tower. These types of things will break you down in the short run, but if you don't do this regularly, the next day you could actually feel the speed immediately kick in. You might be able to train with fins or paddles. These things will add resistance, give you that muscle activation. Not only that, they're gonna teach you how to swim faster. If you do 25s as fast as you can with a pair of fins, you're going to be able to go above race pace. You're teaching your body position what it's like to swim really, really fast. So if you have the right technique, if you focus on the right things, you put together the right resistance, these are all ways that you can swim faster without any kind of taper. And of course, you have to focus on recovery. It is so important to not just focus on recovery, but to think about swimming from a holistic perspective. I literally wrote a book called How to Swim Faster, A Holistic Training Guide, because it's not just about swimming fast and training. It's not just about recovering and sleeping right, but nutrition, injury prevention. All of these things I not only talk about in my book, which you can check out linked in the description, but these all put together the optimal scenario for swimming fast. You can't just think about swimming fast in a bubble. You have to really think about it from a holistic perspective, which means making sure you are getting enough sleep so that you can recover and hit the next workout that much harder. You also gotta make sure you're hydrated, your nutrition is on point, you're burning calories when you train. So if you can put it all together from a holistic perspective, that's how you're gonna be able to swim fast without tapering. I'm not the anti-taper guy. Tapering is amazing. And if you do all the stuff that I talked about in this video, when you do taper, you're gonna drop even more time. So let me know what you think in the comments and happy swimming.